All right, Sean. Now, I want to ask here just to start because it's very clear from your IMDb profile that you must be a comic book fan. There's pictures of you with Stan Lee. You're at Comic-Cons, like all these things going on. So I have to ask, how did your comics fandom influence your desire to get into producing, writing, directing films like Heroes of the Golden Mask? When I started Arcana Comics, my goal was to publish comic books and then kind of be like a Stan Lee and have someone make, you know, my Spider-Man and go to set, eat the snacks and, and kind of, you know, watch other people make my movies. Uh, didn't work out that way. It's a lot harder than you might think. And so arguably it was maybe easier for me to actually just start producing. And so I actually ended up producing uh, my first uh, animated series, Kagagi, and then Pixies, and then ultimately ended up to Heroes of the Golden Mask. That's awesome. Now, I, I have to ask, too, because, you know, obviously you have cast members in Heroes of the Golden Mask, like Ron Perlman, Patton Oswalt. They have ties to comic book based productions like Hellboy and Modoc and many others. Uh, now, Patton in particular is very well known for his genre fandom. So were you guys able to geek out together in between recording sessions or your discussions? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's kind of funny because, you know, the casting is very, um, you know, driven by me if you will and so i've worked with a few of them in the past and uh yeah i mean pat is amazing and so he actually has a recording studio at his home uh because i think the goldbergs uh when he was the voice of it so i believe they put it there and um yeah amazing to work with truly Okay. Now, uh, you know, for those who have not seen the film just yet, Heroes of the Golden Mask, it features a team of adventurers from throughout history and the world, kind of like the Avengers, if they were based in ancient China, had cool portals to travel through time and space. So are these characters in any way based on existing historical figures of myth, or are they just archetypes? Well said. So it's actually, so um, Aesop, which is Patton Oswalt's character, is based from Atlantis, the lost city of Atlantis. And Zuma is Chichen Itza. Uh, we never actually say it in the script. It's like all these people are from lost cities of the, you know, nether years. And so Sang Shun Dui is a newly discovered lost city in China. And ultimately, that's where the masks and, and the powers come from. So we kind of had every character with their own little mythos. Uh, again, don't go into it in the in the film per se on the nose, but that was definitely the background for them. Oh, okay, great. Now, uh, I, I would say in addition to kind of the comic book influence, Heroes of the Golden Mask feels very much like it could have been like a syndicated cartoon series alongside like Captain Planet or Silverhawks going really deep, something like Dino Saucers, you know? So how influenced would you say you were by team adventure cartoons of the 80s and 90s? 100%. Obviously, there's going to be a touch of Power Rangers in there, even if it's not animated. But it's definitely that type of one. I mean, you know, Nickelodeon used to call it wish fulfillment. Um, and so, you know, I think, I mean, at least I have. I'm not sure about every kid, but, a lot of, you know, you, you find a mask, you find a ring. And you become Green Lantern. You find a mask and you become Charlie from Heroes of the Golden Mask. And, uh, you know, it's that type of, you know, what kids want to wish for. And at least I did. And even as an adult, I still think it would be pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. Now, animation is obviously a very international process these days. It really traditionally has been. So was Heroes of the Golden Mask, was that produced in China first and then you were brought on to direct the American voice cast? Or was it a much more collaborative process in the development of the film? Yeah, officially it's a co-production uh, with Golden Images. And so they're out of China and it's part of China's cultural um, heritage. And so that's why Seng Shun Dui is up in the forefront of it, kind of the city, the lost city. And so they did a lot of the development, first pass of the screenplay, um, a lot of the designs, and then uh, post-production and distribution as well. And then we were kind of the meat and potatoes of production, if you will. Um, the animation, uh, the American voice casting, um, I did get to write new dialogue and scripts that's always fun being a director sometimes you know you you wonder how much freedom the you get so this is awesome 
That's awesome. Yeah, definitely. Now, this is uh, you noted as being Christopher Plummer's final performance. And I have to admit, I didn't expect him to be playing a Brando-esque Godfather kind of heavy character. That really caught me off guard. And since you had worked with him previously on Pixies and your Howard Lovecraft films, things like that, was this a role you had him in mind for specifically? It was. And to be honest with you, he caught me off guard a little bit too, and I loved it. So he, um, I think I directed him maybe seven or eight times. Uh, he's also Canadian. Uh, when I got my first animated feature, Pixies, he is the voice of the Pixie King. And it's funny, I read an article by um, uh, Donnie Darko's director, and it was like, you know, once you start getting your first actor in and some cool people. It's like everyone joins the pool party. And so with Christopher Plummer, it was like, you know, well, who else is in this? Christopher Plummer. And Pat also it's like, oh, okay, that's cool. And then the, the, everyone else is willing to kind of take a chance on those type of things. So um, I've worked with him before many times. And then what I love about Mr. Plummer is he actually takes the time to read, think, analyze. He's like, I'm thinking my character would sound like this. And I, I always love natural voice, if ever I can pick. And so for him to come with this and had the whole background thought out, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was amazing. Yeah, it's a fantastic performance. I really enjoyed it. Now, you also have worked with Bruce Willis on what turned out ultimately to be some of his final films uh, officially. And Bruce did have some, you know, forays in animation, Bruno the Kid, Over the Hedge. He was even in Beavis and Butthead, Do America, which is amazing. So was he ever considered for a role in this movie? Is, is he doing voice acting these days, to your knowledge? Yeah, I mean, it's funny. So like I, I wrote in, I believe I'm the last writer-director um to have worked with him uh, on corrective measures and then afterwards uh there was a, a trilogy of films called um the night trilogy and so those ones are just released now with Lionsgate and so I believe those are his last three movies and I was on set with him uh in Vancouver for voice acting yeah to be honest with you I forgot about I didn't know about Beavis and Butthead over the hedge I do remember and so I never actually pitched them. I actually probably should have looking back on that. <laughs> Missed opportunities there. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, obviously just getting back to heroes of the golden mask, are there plans to create a franchise? Cause it feels like a concept with a lot of room to expand into films or a streaming series. And you have a lot a history of turning things into a franchise. Is that part of the plan or how does that work? Yeah. It's one of those things It's part of the plan. So the movie comes out in the U S on June 9th, 2023. And then it has a very wide theatrical release in China. So while I am planning to make a franchise, you kind of never really know, I believe. Um, you know, the, I would love to, you know, Mar even Marvel and everyone pivots right now, right? I think Willow season two is no longer. And yeah, you always have plans, <laughs> right? I was really bummed on that, to be honest, yeah. because I'm a fan. But um, you always have these big plans and, you know, you hope to carry them out. But the vision is definitely there. And I would like to, just like I mentioned, explore these lost cities. Um, I'm a big fan of UNESCO heritage sites. I've been to over 100, and I actually collect masks when I travel in Costa Rica and everywhere I've been. So Machu Picchu, and it, it's been, you know, that's what I love to do. So. Well, fantastic. Well, hey, best of luck with the release of uh, Heroes of the Golden Mask. It's a lot of fun. It's a great adventure, great performances all around. So even you get in on the action a little bit there. You get to play the, the sidekick to Christopher Plummer's Rizzo. Exactly. Thurman, he's not the brightest bulb, but, uh, you know, he gets by. <laughs>